At this point, Bullseye is looking great and you completed all of the items on your programming to-do list. Congratulations. However, you're not done quite yet. Currently, the iPhone only supports four inch device sizes like the iPhone 5, the iPhone 5S, and the iPhone SE. But what about other phones like the iPhone 7 or the iPhone 7 Plus that have bigger screens? Ideally, you'd like Bullseye to work on those as well. And luckily you can, and it's easy, through the power of a really cool technology called Auto Layout. Understanding Auto Layout is a core skill for all professional iOS developers. And we'll be covering it in this video and in many other videos in this course. So let's dive right in. When I run the app on the iPhone SE, it looks fine. It takes advantage of all the screen size. But when I run the app on iPhone 7, which has a wider screen size, the app currently doesn't take advantage of any of this extra space since that it's just the same size in the bigger area of space. What we want the app to do is adapt its size and change its layout based on the screen size, and that is exactly what auto layout is for. Let's see how this works. So inside main.storyboard, we can first of all preview what this looks like on different screen sizes. Click down here where it says view as, and you can select different devices. So if you click one over from where we are, that's the iPhone 7, and you want to click the orientation again, so it's set in landscape. And here we can preview the problem and try to fix it in Interface Builder before we go and see it on the simulator. Now the way Auto Layout works is you can select any element on your screen and set up different rules of where it should be in relation to other items. For example, I can say, well, I want this button to be 20 pixels from the bottom of this slider. Or I could say, I want this button right here to be 50 pixels over from the left of the screen. Or I could say, I want this to be centered in the middle of the screen, and so on. There's all kinds of different rules like that you can add. Those rules are called constraints, and they're pretty easy to set up in Interface Builder. So as an example, let's start by trying to change this background. We want The rules we want to set up conceptually, right, is we want it to be as big as the available area. And the way you can do that if by setting up rules is you say, well, I want the bottom to be tied to the bottom of the screen. I want the right to be tied with the right of the screen, the top to the top, and the left to the left. And so we would need four constraints for those to specify each of those sides. And the way we do that is down here in the bottom, there's a button called Add New Constraints. And you can set up various types of constraints. And the ones we want right here are these four. If we click these little arrows right here that turn red when I click them. That is pinning the top of this little thing represents your view, and this thing up here represents the nearest neighbor, which in our case would be the layout guides that show how big this view can be. So we want the top of the view to be zero away from the top layout guide, zero, the left of the view to be zero away from the left layout guide, and so on all around. So I'll just put zeros here all around the screen, and I'll click add four constraints. And there we go, we can see the image has now resized the appropriate things. Now, for all the rest of these things, I could add similar rules. So I could say where how far away the left should be, the top, or center vertically, and other things like that. But since you're just beginning with auto layout, we're gonna keep things really simple. And I'm gonna show you a shortcut that we can do to make setting up the layout for this app pretty good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of these things right here, and I'm gonna go to Editor, Embed In, View. And what that does is it puts all of these things inside a parent view. You can think of that as kind of like a group. And so I can now you know, move this around and it moves all of the things inside it, which makes it really convenient for layout purposes because now all I have to do is position this view properly and I don't have to worry about positioning all of these inside of there any differently. Okay, we need to do two things. First of all, we need to tell auto layout the width and the height to make this view. I click down here and we're gonna set up a constraint for the width and the height. And I'm just gonna leave the default values, which is whatever the current value of the view is and click add new constraints. We also need to tell auto layout where to put this view. So there's another button, one over from the add constraints called align. It adds a different type of constraint, which are about alignment. And I want to horizontally and vertically center this view in the container. So I click that and check it out. It's now centered in the screen, which is looking pretty good. Now there's one last thing that you might notice is the background of the view is white by default. And so we want to make that clear instead. So I'll click that and change the opacity all the way down to zero. That's it. Now I'll build and run. And check it out. And now the app is looking pretty good on both the iPhone 7 and also the iPhone SE. You may be wondering, what happens if you don't add any constraints to your views? Well, in that case, Xcode will automatically create constraints for you when the app runs. That's why you didn't have to do any of this before. However, these automatic default constraints that Xcode adds might not be what you want. 
for example, it won't resize your views to make use of the extra space, which leads to the problem that we saw here. If you want that to happen, then it's up to you to add those additional constraints to tell Xcode what it should do with the extra space. After all, Xcode can't read your mind. The rule is, as soon as you add one constraint into a view, then Xcode will no longer add its automatic constraints, and it's all up to you. So from then on, after you add one constraint, it's your responsibility to make sure you add enough constraints so that Xcode always knows, for each view, where its position should be and what its size should be.